Stephen, you're also presenting at the Octia conference. I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about your presentation, please. Yeah, I was asked to do a session on uh, research uh, and uh, what unspeakable things research can say about uh, counselling. Um, there's an awful lot of stuff that's unspoken about counselling. A lot of it comes out in the detail of uh, good quality research. Um, I've found over the years uh, a lot of counsellors are a little bit wary of research, don't always trust it, as it being something that's done by other people sometimes. Um, not all counsellors are trained to be uh, research practitioners, unlike psychologists. Um, so we don't always have the, the detailed knowledge to get us over that, that hurdle uh, of getting into it. Um, and yet, counsellors also ask me, um, why is it people don't always accept that what we do is valuable? And the answer is very simple. We need to prove it. Um, everyone who has an interest in uh, doing this kind of work, uh, whether they're clients, whether they're counsellors, uh, whether they're people who are going to be uh, funding uh, as a, a third-party agency, um, got a legitimate right to ask, what am I going to get? Um, and uh, it's worth knowing uh, in advance that what we're offering is going to be effective, that it is going to be safe, um, and that we've got uh, a reasonably highly evolved way of doing things. Now, an awful lot of counsellors know that what they do is good because they're responsible people and they pay attention to what they're doing and they reflect on their work. Um, but when it comes to proving that to other people, then we really need the research. Um, and research can show us some surprising things about our work. Um, we don't always uh, help clients in the way that we think that we do. Uh, clients often make sense of our work uh, in ways that are uh, entirely individual to that client. Um, and it can be worth working with the client's way of doing things. And research, great way of uh, uh, finding uh, out about uh, what's going on for clients. Um, as counsellors, um, we sometimes have a slightly different idea as to how things are helping and why. Um, so engaging with the research is a, a fundamental part of, of progressing uh, any modality of, of uh, intervention. Um, and the same is true of uh, therapy over the internet. Um, we've got a, an expanding evidence base at the moment, which is more and more encouraging. Um, but there are several gaps we need to fill. Um, and it's surprisingly easy for practitioners simply to get together in groups, um, share the work out between them, um, and produce some really good quality research that is then really convincing. Uh, it's the way that uh, therapy has progressed over the years uh, in any case. And we've rarely been accepted uh, where people haven't done some decent quality studies. Um, one of the things I want to do uh, in the conference uh, is encourage people to band together in that way and form what get referred to sometimes as practice research networks. Um, and it, even if you have no background in research, even if you have very little interest in research for yourself, it's still possible to participate in those things. Um, it's worth having a guide uh, who uh, has some research expertise. But that doesn't need to be everybody in the group. Um, your role can simply be collecting data and uh, putting it together uh, pooled with uh, data from uh, a number of other therapists, um, and then we can get some findings that are, are really quite powerful, um, convincing, and we can fill the gaps uh, in our knowledge base um, as it stands at the moment. That gives us something much, much more solid to move on with. Um, we have things we can show to clients, we have things we can show to funding bodies, and we learn about ourselves as well. Um, it's surprising how often I've worked with counsellors uh, to do research studies and at the outset they say things like, well, why should we pay attention to this? Why should we bother uh, asking our clients to fill in all these forms? Um, and then get to the end of the uh, research study um, and I have counsellors who say to me, well, how can we carry this on? We know you're not going to be involved as a researcher anymore. We, we find this so valuable. We just don't want to stop. Um, uh, so uh, uh, another part of what I'm wanting to do is to encourage people to have a research and evaluation and feedback mechanisms um, as a, a routine part of their work. Um, and hopefully we can get people together to, to work on that. Yeah, no, that's something you're really passionate about, Stephen, is having a network of practitioners um, to fill those gaps, as you say, in our knowledge. Yeah, it's very difficult for one practitioner on their own to do substantial uh, pieces of research. Uh, and very often practitioners feel they don't have the expertise and uh, skills that are required. And sometimes that's quite true. It's, it's worth being a little bit cautious. And there is some 
comparable research around. Uh, for years, counseling got dismissed on the grounds that the evidence base was kind of weak. There were some studies, but they weren't really high quality studies, and so they got dismissed. Um, but with a little expert guidance, uh, it's surprisingly easy uh, to get around that. Um, it doesn't need to cost a lot of money. It doesn't need to take a lot of time and effort. Um, and as I say, with expert guidance, uh, every practitioner can be involved in, in research. I think that sounds really exciting and, and something that will um, really catch the imagination of the delegates. Well, I hope so. One of the things I'm looking forward to is the Octia conference is uh, by having access to an audience that's uh, scattered around the globe, uh, we can pick up uh, people to take part in, in research networks uh, from really diverse backgrounds. Uh, and that gives us a chance to compare data from uh, one particular setting uh, right to different cultural uh, settings, uh, different ways of working. Um, so we end up being able to make statements uh, about what counselling can and can't achieve, how it works, what its processes are um, in, in a very broad way. Um, there's a huge strength from this kind of uh, uh, global network. Yeah, so we're really looking for as many people from as many different cultures to to come to Octia and share in the experience. And it sounds like you both are bringing a lot to the conference. And one of the things that I've been asking the presenters and the organisers is, um, what are you hoping to, to take away yourself from Octia? Well, one of the things that I'd like to see uh, is that the two days of the conference are really only just the start, uh, that they have um, a real spin-off um, and people do get together and we produce some tangible uh, work afterwards uh, in developing evidence base, finding research that serves the needs of, of the therapists, uh, serves the needs of clients um, and that uh, uh, leads to some, some real solid uh, outputs uh, further down the line. Um, I'm hoping that that day is only going to kick start things uh, and get the ball rolling. Yeah, that sounds great. But the conference is the start of something. That sounds really exciting. So thank you both for making time this afternoon to um, give us an interview and give us a tour of what you're doing here in Second Life and just really looking forward to seeing you in Manchester, seeing you online and being with you in Second Life. Looking forward to it, John. See you there. Yeah, a pleasure. See you there.